Hello everyone, and welcome back to part 13 of how to create an endless runner using Unity and C Sharp. Uh, today should be a fairly short episode. Um, we're just going to be covering sounds, and just one-shot sounds, so we're going to be covering sounds for things like when we hit a coin, or when we take damage. Um, we'll cover background music in a different video, um, but yeah, for now we'll just start off with this. So, um, just like Piscal, there are many programs out there to make free assets for games. Um, and for music, a really good one is just called BFXR. Um, so if you just come to Google and go BFXR, and just go to the first thing that comes up, and you'll be brought to this program. Um, you can download it, or you can just run it in browser. Um, I've already downloaded it, and so I'm just going to use it like that. So I'll just close this and come to it down here. Um, but this is what we're going to be using to make all of our music. Well, not our music, but all of our sound effects. Uh, it's a really powerful tool for creating retro sounds. So it's only 16 and 8-bit sounds, but it randomizes. So we can just click on here, and every time we'll get a different coin sound. And each one's saved. So then we can just... Go through and choose one we like. I do like the sound of this one, so I'm just going to rename it to sound uh, to pick up coin and export it. And I'll just export it to here. And then we'll also just make one for when we get hit. Might just do that for a little bit quieter. Cool, so we we'll use that when we get hit. And now we have two sound effects. So we can just drag them into our scene. Yeah, um, I closed the program. Well, actually, I didn't even close the program, so why didn't hit save properly? Let's just export that again. And okay, cool. So we'll grab both of our sounds and drag them into our assets. And then we'll want to make a new folder for them. So create folder, just call it sounds, and we'll drag these into here. Cool. Um, so now that we have our sounds, we can start setting everything up. Um, we'll just start off with some programming. This should be pretty simple. Um, when we will start off with the coin sound. So obviously we want this to play whenever the player interacts with a coin. Um, we have two bits of script that run, or two different scripts that run when we interact with the coin. One that is adding coins to our counter, and one that is triggering that to happen. So we're just going to play this when we trigger that to happen. So if we come to our coin script in Visual Studio, and this is where we're triggering um, the coin counter to happen over in this script, down here. So over here is where we're going to play our sound. So we're just going to need to add a variable for our sound. Well, two variables. One that will be just a public um, audio clip. Oops. And we'll just call this one um, coin sound. And we're going to need a private variable, which is going to be our audio source. And we'll just call this audio. And so basically, this is where we're going to be storing our actual sound clip, which will be the little ting sound for our coin. And this is will be this will be what is actually producing the sound. Um, an audio source is just a component in Unity that you add to an object to allow it to create sound. Um, so I'll show you that in a little bit. So now that we have that, we need to set what the audio source is. So we'll do that in start by going audio is equal to get component and it's going to be equal to the audio source that is on the object that this script is on which we'll need to add an audio source to it in a second and then we can just come down to our if statement and play the actual sound so just before we actually add onto our score on onto our coins we'll play the sound 
And this is really simple, we just need to write audio with a capital because this is referring to our audio source. And we're just telling our audio source to play a one shot sound, so we'll only play it once. And the sound is just going to be coin sound, and it's going to be at a volume of 0.7. Um, this is just the volume here, so 0 would be no volume and 1 would be full volume. And yeah, so if we just save that, uh, that needs to be a comma, not a full stop. So if we just save this and come back to our game, wait for it to load, and then go to our UI controller, because that's where we just actually know. We put it on our coin, and yeah, our coin is on our UI controller, so we come over to our UI controller. And here we have our coin script, which now has an audio clip. So we'll drag our audio clip into here for our coin. And then if we press play now, nothing will happen because we still haven't added our audio source, which is the bit that we were grabbing in our code. So I'll just show you like this. If we press play, when we hit a coin, it's just going to complain down here that there's no audio source attached and not play the sound. So to fix that, we just need to add an audio source. And then that's all we really need to do for that. So now if we press play again, whenever we collide with a coin, we'll hear our coin sound. Cool. So now we have coins. As you can see, when we hit something, we still don't have a sound. So we'll add that sound. Um, that's going to be exactly the same thing, but instead of doing it in our coin script, we're going to do it in our player script because we need to trigger this one whenever the player collides with something that can hurt him, which we're doing down here. So again, we'll come back up and add our variables. We can just copy these and change them. So we'll just copy that, paste them into here, and instead of being our coin sound, this is now going to be our hit sound, but our audio is still just going to be audio. Um, because it's a private var uh, variable, it's only going to be inside of this script, so it doesn't matter if it has the same name. Um, so now that we have them, come back over here and we'll copy our get component, which we had in our start function. And we'll just place that in the start function in our player script. So now our audio here, our audio source, is equal to the audio source that is on our player. Cool. So now we can play the sound again. So we just need to come down and again, just audio because we're getting our um, audio source. We're telling it to play one shot and it's playing hit sound and it's playing it at the same volume as the other thing. Cool. So now we should just be able to go back into Unity and then because it was in our player script that we just added all of that, we now want to go to our player once it's loaded. And if we go to our player script, you'll see now we have a hit sound. So we'll put our hit sound in there, and then add our audio source so that player can produce sounds. And also, just as a note, you also need an audio listener, but the camera comes with an audio listener as default, so we have one there. Um, you can only have one audio, well, you can have more than one audio listener in a scene, but you should only ever have one, or at least one that is active. So now that we have both of them on the player, we can press play, and when we hit stuff, we get the hit sound. And when we hit a coin, we get the coin sound. Cool. Um, so I think that would be it for this episode. Like I said, it'll be, it was going to be a shortly, I mean a fairly short one today. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so now that we have starting the sounds, I think our game is really starting to come along a bit. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for the next one. I'll see you then.